Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the many different ways there are to define a custom tool with holder to be used with Top Solid Cam. To begin with, I'm going to build a new assembly. So I'm going to create just a simple assembly here, and I'm going to call it 0 0.500 end mill. Good enough. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take some information that I included, or that I downloaded from the machining cloud. So here's a type of heat shrink holder. Perfect. And here's a half inch end mill. And I'm going to assemble my half inch end mill there. I'm going to say take that to that plane. Perfect. I'm assembled. Next what I need to do is I need to make sure that my frames are all set up the right way. To do that, the first thing I'm going to do is go to my entities tree here and activate my absolute frame just to make to have a look at its orientation and its location. If your entities tree is not shown, remember you can go up to the seven icon, go to view and activate it here. Now this frame is already oriented perfectly, okay? And I got lucky, in fact, there. Sometimes when you download these holders, they come in skewed in different ways. But at the end of the day, what you need to know about is this. The frame that you're going to create here, where the face of the holder is going to get aligned with the face of your spindle, needs to be oriented, as you see here, with the X going to the right, the Y going back, and the Z positive going up through the spindle. What you don't know is that all machine definitions, where you use a tool like this, have their frames defined in this orientation. This is what aligns your assemble tool with the machine spindle. Next, we also need a frame down here at the cutting edge origin, but this frame needs to be rotated forward 90 degrees so that the Z axis is coming away, but X is always X. And there's a bunch of different ways to create frames to do that. For me, I'm just gonna do a frame by point and plane, or pardon me, frame on plane. My plane is going to be this face. My projected point is going to be the absolute origin point. Perfect. And I want my X to be X, which is fantastic. But I want to rotate about X by minus 90 degrees. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. X is going to the right, Y is going up, and Z is going away from us, or away from the part. This is just the requirement of the command. From here, we need to make two sketches as well. And I'm gonna make my first sketch right on the X, Y axis of that frame. So I'll right click on it, create a sketch. I'm gonna use a built-in tool called Revolve Silhouette. We'll select the cutting tool, turn on my preview. I'll choose the axis of revolution. Like that, Top Solid is gonna to automatically make for us the revolved profile of that. Perfect. I'm gonna validate that sketch. Next, I'm gonna go up here and do the same thing on this frame. I'm gonna select there, create a sketch. I'm gonna to go to Revolve Profile, select my shape, turn on my preview, and I'm gonna select my orthogonal Y axis. In this case, you get the Revolve Profile again. But here I'm gonna simplify this a little bit because if I zoom up, I don't really want this little dimple in here. And let me describe really quick what these profiles are for. This profile is what's gonna be used for collision checking within Top Solid Cam. Same with this profile. So I'm just gonna be smarter with what I'm having the solution check for. Maybe I'm gonna use some segment removing to clean this up. For example, I don't want that segment or that segment. So I'm gonna select them both. And you can see by the preview, the software is gonna extend this line down till it hits that. Perfect. Maybe up here, okay, I really don't need to be this accurate either. I'd rather know if the two, if a collision was going to happen to this area, not get all the way inside there. So I'm going to simplify that out. Maybe I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to want to select the objects I don't want. Notice I'm on extend limit. Perfect. And now I'm done. I've set the profiles the way I need them. The final step is to define the tool. So I'm going to hit save once. And now I'm going to go to my tools drop down menu. I'm going to go to functions and go to top solid cam wizards and choose machining component wizard. Now what I'm showing you here is fast and down and dirty. This is going to get the job done for collision analysis, for cutting, for everything. And for a one-off tool like this, this is an efficient way to work. So I'm describing a cutter. It's a type of milling tool. What type of milling tool? You can see all the various milling tools we support here. This is a radius mill because there's a little corner radius down there. It's a universal type of holder as well. And I'm going to hit next. Now it wants to know what the cutting diameter is. Well, this is going to be a half inch diameter tool with one and a half inches of flute length. The corner radius is 20 thousandths of an inch. I'm gonna say that it's made of some kind of coated carbide. It's got four teeth on it, which is fantastic. And then the cutting edge origin, 
which you can see by the preview down here, is this. Perfect. I'm going to hit next. Now, tooling system size, the only reason we'd care about this is if we were going to build a library of individual components. For right now, we can just skip this, keep it as universal. As far as the frame, it's this frame right here. Again, this is the frame where it's going to be plugged into the spindle of the machine. I'm going to hit next. Now it wants the cutting section and the collision section. Okay, hence the word cutting, hence the word collision. Plus, if you look at the preview of the images, it's showing you what it wants to see. So for the cutting section, I'm going to choose this one. For the collision section, I'm going to choose that one. Boom. Now for the center offset, everything in here is going to be filled out in automatic. The only thing we want to be careful about is the point for the offset here, because right now, if you zoom way up, you can see that it's offset up the radius of the part, which is perfect. If you want, I could select this edge here and snap to the center of that edge, but it gives you the same thing. The software is taking everything and trying to fill out everything in automatic for you. Same thing down here, that origin's down at the bottom, the plane compensation's at the bottom. Everything is actually already filled out because our frames are correct. The last thing, give it a name, green check mark, and you have defined the tool. Last step, I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to check it in. And checking it in closes the minor revision, and now this tool is ready to use. How? Well, let's go test it out. So here I'm going to go into my 2D milling, and I'll go to side milling options, for example. I'm going to roll back before any of these operations. I'm going to pick this face and go to end milling. And here, I'm going to go pick my tool. I want my radius mill. I'm going to go double click on an empty pocket. I'm going to turn off my filters here. And by the way, I'm looking specifically in my project, tips and tricks here. You can change that by clicking on this button, coming up here and pointing specifically to the project you want to look in. Okay. And then say, okay. Oops. I missed it. My bad. Let's turn off the filters. There it is. Green check mark. And here's our cutting tool. I'm going to validate, let it do its thing. You can see the corner radius was put onto the part just fine. And if we look, there's our simulation. And you are ready to use this tool in the future. Now, in this case, I put this assembled tool just in my working project. If this is a tool you're going to use a lot, you'll probably want to put it in your library that you've created for all of your custom tooling. I hope you found this video helpful. Check back soon for more.